today on CityCast Philly. Central Bucks, a suburban school district about an hour away, plans to start using AI software to track students' activities online. The idea is to prevent bullying, suicide, or even a school shooting. Other districts, including Philadelphia, already use versions of this technology. But critics say there isn't research showing it works, and it has some serious downsides. It's Monday, April 24th. I'm Trini Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Emily Rizzo, you're a reporter for WHYY News. You recently wrote about how a local school district is going to start monitoring students' activity online. What is it looking at? Well, the software is called GoGuardian, and it says it's it's going to monitor basically everything students do online. So what they search in Google, social media, emails, chats, apps, and more. That's directly from the, the website. So it's also pretty vague. So it's supposed to track their activity online to prevent what? For instance, with Central Bucks, they're saying the intention is to prevent bullying. Well, with Go Guardian in general, they say they want to prevent suicide. It's supposed to help districts intervene um, before a crisis occurs. It's also supposed to prevent violence in schools and bullying. Emily, Go Guardian is an AI software. Can you describe how it works? Yeah. So Go Guardian, um, first of all, has different levels of surveillance. The one I focused on is called Go Guardian Beacon. Go Guardian Beacon is supposed to scan everything that students do online and send alerts to district officials, um, guidance counselors, and depending on the situation, potentially law enforcement. And so it's supposed to flag a student and say, hi, we think that this student may be struggling. Emily, you talked about Central Bucks. And what I mean, what other school districts in our area are using this type of technology? So Philadelphia does have a GoGuardian subscription. Um, I actually just spoke with a school district of Philadelphia representative. And what Philadelphia does is a much lower level of surveillance than what Central Bucks is trying out. So they use GoGuardian to block inappropriate websites on district-issued computers. And they can get alerted if a student tries to go on an inappropriate site. So that's very different than, you know, 24-7 scanning, surveilling everything students are doing online, right? And then other districts in the area, there's only about 30 actually in all of Pennsylvania that are paying for a GoGuardian subscription right now. And there's only a few in the Philly region and all have different levels of surveillance with GoGuardian specifically. This technology is meant to help students who are struggling in silence. So what gets flagged? Yeah. For example, a student could Google, you know, resources about suicide and it could flag that Google search. And it can also flag that student's search history if it relates to suicide or any any Google Docs, for instance, that talk about suicide. So it could be a student's journal or an essay that they wrote for school. It could be anything that's on a school district issued computer. And so then authorities would get that alert and then they would intervene and sometimes even law enforcement. Yeah. So the thing is that districts customize that response. So districts can decide how they want to respond to each alert. And so it could go to an administrator. It could go to a a counselor. It could go to a teacher and alert. Um, But with the GoGuardian beacon option that Central Bucks is using, for instance, they're they're trying out a 24-7 surveillance software. So In other districts that have tried this, alerts can be sent to law enforcement in the off hours when, for instance, teachers aren't working or administrators can't respond, let's say, at 1 a.m. on a a Thursday morning. Um, So those kinds of alerts can be sent to law enforcement, um, depending on the situation.
What do experts say about the effectiveness of these types of technologies? Yeah, I want to give you a quote from Elizabeth Laird from the Center for Democracy and Technology. She said, there is no independent evidence that any of these tools do what they say they do. So, you know, these companies will give anecdotal evidence sometimes. Sometimes they'll share their own data, but that data hasn't been independently verified by outside researchers. So researchers who really look into this are like, we can't prove that they prevent suicide, that they prevent violence. And they'll say on top of that, it no matter what, it doesn't replace human interaction. That's the best way to prevent these scenarios from happening. It also seems like a major invasion of privacy, too. Yeah, that's what a lot of data and privacy experts and the ACLU says, um, that it does violate students' privacy for sure. And so the Center for Democracy and Technology says when students find out they're being surveilled, they are less likely to freely express themselves and they're less likely to look for mental health resources. So there is a Mm. chilling effect that Elizabeth Laird from the Center for Democracy and Technology says will always happen. In your article, you talked about how this software may have more consequences for some students than others. Why is that? So um, researchers say that these softwares disproportionately impact low-income, working-class students, um, homeless students, students of color, and LGBTQ students. And part of that is because those students are more likely to use district-issued devices. So again, GoGuardian, Mm -hmm. for instance, is only for district-issued devices. So if you have to use a school-owned computer, you're probably, maybe you're using that, you know, at home on the weekends for a video game or whatever a kid is doing online, um, and that is being surveilled. It can also disproportionately impact LGBTQ students, for instance, because LGBTQ students are most likely to research mental health resources. Mm. I already heard from a student in one district in Bucks County who told me that um, they know that they're being surveilled by GoGuardian. It's creepy. And often it leads to counselors knocking on classroom doors, pulling students out of class to talk to them about something that the student wrote online. So, you know, what advocates and data and privacy experts ask is, is the potential benefit worth the risk? And that risk is you may harm a lot more students than you are actually protecting. Experts really are trying to ask districts to consider them before they implement these softwares to consider, okay, how can we um, put in guardrails to ideally prevent some of these harms from happening? So then, and and, and the point, again, is that the school gets flagged and the school will try to intervene in in a safe way? You know, yeah. Do all schools even have those type of resources for those particular students? Exactly. I mean, many schools don't have the resources to have a guidance counselor who's trained to respond to these kinds of things. You know, they're not equipped to have this many people on deck, you know, to respond. And that's why sometimes these alerts get sent to law enforcement. And then... You have to ask, well, is law enforcement the right person to respond to a mental health crisis? Research shows that these softwares lead to discipline more than safety. So that connects to this conversation about law enforcement and and how districts respond. Okay, that's a lot to consider. How have these companies responded to this type of criticism? Like, what's their response been? I asked GoGuardian's representative a few questions, and he did respond. One thing he said to me was, GoGuardian Beacon, which is what Central Bucks is trying out, is intended to be one part of a school's larger suicide, self-harm, and violence prevention program. So I think that's that's an important note. Uh, you know, and then his other response was very 
general about how GoGuardian Beacon is our student safety solution that helps counselors and other school staff better and more quickly identify students who may be struggling with mental health challenges that may otherwise go unnoticed. But I asked a lot uh, a few other questions and, and and didn't get a response. You know, hey, Go Guardian, can you can you point to me how you've prevented suicide, how you've prevented violence? And I didn't get a I didn't get an answer. Emily, for listeners who are parents or guardians, what questions should they ask their child's school district, and how can they protect their child's privacy? Yeah, that's a great question. They should find out. One, find out if your district uses a surveillance software, <laughs> if a software is being used in your district, and, and, and ask your district, what topics are you flagging? What words are you flagging? And what procedures and policies do you have in place to prevent the potential harms with using these softwares? What are you doing? And what's your, so what's your response process? Um... Yeah, what does that look like in the off hours where where district administrators aren't working? So asking those kinds of questions, how does this work? What are you flagging and how are you responding? Yeah. I spoke with an advocate with the ACLU based in Pittsburgh and and she said no matter how much you surveil students, right? It doesn't replace that human interaction. And so the best way to prevent suicide or a mental health crisis is by forming positive relationships with students and creating an overall safe and inclusive environment in your school district. Emily Rizzo, reporter for WHYY. Thank you so much for breaking this all down and for joining me on CityCast Philly. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. We'll have the link to Emily's full story in our show notes. And here's what else Philly's talking about. Shackling and solitary confinement of pregnant inmates may soon be banned in Pennsylvania prisons. According to Philly Voice, this proposed bill passed out of committee last week and is now being considered in the state house. If it becomes law, incarcerated women would get three days of post-delivery bonding time with their newborns. It also includes training for corrections officers. And Billy Penn reports that the ballot layout for the city's primary election has been set. The Office of City Commissioners, which oversees the elections, had to fit 109 candidates on the ballot. We'll have a link in our show notes so you can preview it. Ballots are available in English, Spanish and Chinese. Election day is May 16th. It's time for the tip of the day where we share a life hack for living in Philly. Are you tired of getting those takeout menus in your mailbox or seeing them scattered across your property? Well, you can request a circular free property decal from the Department of Licenses and Inspections. Once the decal is posted on your property, you can report any business that leaves circulars. l and will give them a fine. For more info, go to phila.gov. If you have a tip of the day, we'd love to hear from you too. Call or text us at 215-259-8170. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you enjoyed this episode, please tell a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter too. It's called Hey Philly. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Bye.